Good evening. Uh, Tommy, I'd start with you. What is the very latest you can share with us as it pertains to the organization's handling of the safety and health protocols? Thank you. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank the city. The District of Columbia has been fantastic help in guiding us through all the health and safety protocols, all the frontline workers, everybody involved in trying to keep us all safe. Uh, we want to salute them and thank them. But Chris, the answer to your question, we, we have nine players right now that are in protocol. The six have tested positive for COVID. And we are certainly not going to be able to play these games on Sunday and Monday. Uh, we're, it's a day-to-day -day thing uh, as we get ready to see what's next beyond Sunday and Monday, certainly. But we've stuck together. Everybody's in a good place. I, I think we have a, a very resilient team. It's just an unfortunate set of circumstances. If you follow our track, really going back to when we played Chicago, uh, almost every team we've played had a player test positive. The next day, the next day, multiple players at some places. It, it, it was inevitable. The NBA has been pointing to this period for quite some time that this was going to be very difficult. And uh, they weren't kidding. We, we hit every city that we went to. It just seemed to be more and more. And we would, uh, you, you never want to say, well, we escaped or no, nothing's going wrong for us yet because you just know inevitably something's going to be your turn. And, and this was our turn, unfortunately. Uh, we we took, took a couple punches for sure, but we're, all our players are in good spirits. Uh, very important also to, to consider all of our staff right now is healthy. So we're very grateful for that. But uh, what's ahead is going to be day by day, Chris. Tommy, just one follow up. I appreciate it. Um, is this the 10 to 14 day variety as it pertains to the players that tested positive? That's correct. Uh, most of the protocols I'm going to lead to the medical experts. We're still getting our arms around when what day certain players count as starting that protocol when they were uh, officially ruled tested positive. So, uh, and forgive me as well, uh, not having a whole lot of information to share as it's a very private issue for most of these players. Uh, this whole situation is, is difficult to navigate, but essentially we, we are working with the NBA to figure out who, uh, when, when guys can come back. And certainly you don't come back until you're hundred percent healthy, but what the earliest return to play could possibly be. Fred. Hey, Tommy, um, what, what are you guys as an organization doing in the meantime to, to stay in touch and, and stay communicative? And is there any sort of timetable on when you may even be able to resume uh, team activities with players who are not in health and safety protocols anymore? Well, Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, we've gone down this path before, right? After March. So we're very uh, well versed at gathering and doing Zoom workouts and, and everybody being in touch. Regular communication, everybody's physician coach has been talking with them, everybody's phys uh, physical therapist that we have, we divide up into groups. So everyone's been in regular contact. I've spoken to every player, coach has spoken to every player. So the, the communication has been great in terms of activity. We've been very limited to zero uh, in terms of coming back to the facility. So that's why we utilize the Zoom workouts that we're familiar with. Um, and certainly the players that are in, that are in quarantine, the players that are uh, right now with, with COVID can't even work out. So it's a, it's a limited number that we can actually do. Uh, we're hoping if there's no negative, if there's no positive test tomorrow, that we can get guys back in the gym one on oh, kind of similar to where we were preparing to go to the bubble uh, as we continue to test. Right now, everybody's testing twice a day. We're following the very strict protocols the NBA have going on right now. And, and certainly, you know, our hope is to, to start at least getting some semblance of activity tomorrow in the building, but none of that's guaranteed. And we, we're aware of that. It's very, it's, uh, it's just something you have to be very, very flexible and very understanding at this time. And our players have been great about it. Tim Bontemps. Hey, Tommy, I appreciate you doing this amid difficult circumstances. Um, I, I don't want you to necessarily put you in a position to have to criticize anybody, but it seems like in the wake of, as you mentioned, having to play all these teams in a row who tested positive, including playing, um, you know, the, the Celtics and the Heat on back-to-back -back days last week. Do you think the NBA should have been more cautious in terms of how it was handling 
you guys going through a stretch like that, having to play all these teams with positive tests in a row, or is that just the nature of trying to play this season in the middle of a pandemic? No, you certainly don't blame anybody, Tim. This is a circumstance that's out of everyone's control. The NBA with the union, they've done the most unbelievable job of trying to do the very best job keeping everybody safe and healthy. And it, it's, I, I hate to use some of the cliches that are out there, but it is, it's a moving target. Things change sometimes drastically overnight. Uh, the schedule was the schedule. You can't pick and choose and you trust the system to, to make sure that everybody's as safe as possible. It's just, you know, when, when you had that two week lag coming out of the holidays, everybody pointed to this. We all knew this, the country, the numbers res, uh, reflect what's going on in the country. We knew it was going to happen. We sure didn't think it was going to happen to us. Right. But we can't look backwards. You, you just definitely have to keep moving forward and keep the spirit of camaraderie that, hey, we're all in this together, every team in the league sooner or later. Uh, I think four teams have missed multiple games. And, and so far, that I would think that's a small victory considering what's going on out there around the league, but uh, what could be coming. But I think right now, uh, to assign blame or take too much time worrying about what could have been done is, is wasted time. We got to just look forward and say, how can we continue to get better and learn better, learn more? And, and certainly, uh, I know the league our, our full trust is in the leagues uh, guiding, guiding us to get as healthy as possible and, and continue to do the very best for everybody's, uh, for the players, for the staff, and, and for everybody's families, quite frankly. And just real quick, uh, since you said that it doesn't seem like, you, you know, you're hoping to be able to get in um, and have some one-on-one work tomorrow, is, it, is even if you have no positives for a while, I imagine you would have to at least be able to have a practice or two to get guys, like, to some sort of conditioning point where they could play in games before you could even return to games at this point, right? Given the amount of time you guys have had to shut down. Yeah, no question. And, and the key part of what you said that in order to practice, you also need players. And we don't have right. enough players to practice whatsoever. So we are, we're patiently working with the league on that. And they've been outstanding, giving us the guidance. And again, we, we didn't have six confirmed COVID cases till today. So this is all... You know, we had planned to be in the facility two days ago, yesterday, today. You know, these things happen and, and you got to deal with them in real time and keep moving forward and stay positive. And like I said, I can't say it enough. Assigning blame or looking backwards is pretty much pointless. You just want to learn from the past. You've heard me say that before. Learn from the past. We just want to keep moving forward and, and, and hopefully, you know, uh, we won't, we'll be able to have a much safer environment moving forward. Thanks, Tommy. Appreciate it. Ava, we don't blame you, Tim. I blame Tim. Um, <laughs> Tommy, um, what conversations, if any, have you had with the league about how they're going to handle or how they might handle um, postponed games in the second half of the schedule, I assume? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? I, my, my internet just blew up on me there. What would you say? Sure. Have you guys had any conversations with the league about how they might handle postponed games? Yeah, certainly. Uh, and the NBA is going to look at everything. Nothing's written down right now, and, and they are throwing ideas out left and right, as you can imagine. It could be as simple as we might be able to maybe reschedule a team like a Detroit or a Cleveland some point here. We have 37 games right in the first half of the season. The second half will be given to us whenever they give it to us. Right now, we know there's at least four games that we're going to miss. Well, probably not going to ask Utah to fly back here across the country uh, right now. That wouldn't be whenever we could fit it in, in, the, in before the next schedule comes out, certainly. But maybe Detroit, maybe Cleveland, there's an opportunity somewhere in there to make up a game here or there. But ultimately, you know, they're going to have to figure that out as they go along. And we're not the only ones, you know, just because we have an open night doesn't mean the, the, the teams that we were postponed against have that same open night. So there's going to be a lot of adjusting, but the NBA anticipated all this. They're absolutely on top of it and, and we'll be in constant communication with them. But in terms of rescheduling, that all comes from the league and we just work with them. And um, maybe Scotty could answer this one, but just wondering what you guys have been, players and coaches have been doing this uh, past week. Hey, thanks for including me on this call. <laughs> Um, yeah, we, I mean, we haven't done anything since the Phoenix game. Um, hopefully like Tommy did mention, hopefully, uh, in the next day or two, we can get some one on zero, 
uh, doesn't look like we're going to practice until probably early in the week. But right now, um, we got nine guys, six guys uh, positive, three guys in the protocol. And then we have Thomas Ryan out and Russell's still out. He'll be evaluated sometime early next week. So we only have six guys to practice if we if we do have a practice. Uh, but in the meantime, we're unfortunately I've, I've I've always said I hope we never have to go to back to a Zoom workouts, but we have um, our strength and conditioning guys have done a great job. Our therapists have done a great job of working with the guys, uh, to trying to keep their cardio as best they can. And we all know you can only do so much in your condo or apartment or home. Uh, in front of your computer screen and then every player has a basketball so after that we're doing some ball handling workouts um, that's the best we can do right now uh, we're trying to stay positive through all of this um, talk to all the guys text to all the guys uh, today in the last few days everybody's um, doing the best they can as well uh, it's difficult but we still have to keep moving forward and the bottom line is we want everybody safe and, and, and continue to uh, stay healthy or get become or get on the man the being uh, being getting back to being healthy. But like I said, we we hope that early next week we can get some practice time together. Tim Reynolds. Thanks, Scott. Um, Tommy. It's 14 teams now that have seen at least one game postponed. Obviously, you guys with the most. Knowing that it prob this isn't the end. Like, I mean, we all know that it, it, it would be naive to think this is going to get better today or tomorrow. Should the league consider a pause when you look at, you know, Philly played with seven. Philly and Miami played eight on eight a couple nights ago. You guys, if you get back on the court tomorrow, you'll probably have eight. You know, I mean, should, should the league consider a pause at this point? You know, that's a great question for the league uh, where we at, we're going to support and all of our players, you know, across the entire league have voted to keep continue to play. So I think the league has the best perspective on what's best for all the teams. I know for ourselves, you know, we were affected by it for sure. As I said before, with you have nine guys in protocol, six tested positive. Those are the facts but we don't, we can't really help those circumstances and where there's not much I could advise other than, you know, what are we learning from that? And I think you'll see some adjustments coming in the next week or two, maybe around testing or something that'll give us all much better uh, evidence earlier. If there is possibly a, a positive player that could possibly go to uh, before they ever get a chance to play in a game. And that's just the adjustments that everybody's having to do as we learn more and more. You got to remember there's a new virus. There's a new strand of virus coming from the UK, from South Africa. How much are those affecting these? The, the, the positives are coming, it seems, quicker now. So actually to be able to identify those quicker before that player ever gets on the game, I think that's ultimately what the league is doing right now. And we support the league. You know, it's, it's tough to look back and, and, and wish you could have done things differently. I, we don't choose to do that. We always look forward and move forward and, and keep learning and, and getting better. Um, you know, it's definitely taken us out of our comfort zone. And I, I think the way when you get out of your comfort zone, that's where the best growth actually happens. So we're all learning a lot about this, Tim. And, and I know Miami was impacted by it. And, and so you're familiar with what's going on. We, we all wish things could have been different, but I think we trust the league to do what's best for all the teams. One quick follow, Tommy. I know, I know you guys today talked about adding a third two-way. Is that something that you think can help? And do, do you think well, the league has granted that, right? So <laughs> literally just got off a call with the GMs and everybody's. Uh, I think that's an acknowledgement of how difficult it is to actually put a team together if you have multiple uh, positives, grabbing guys, you know, uh, and, and they have to be six days negative testing before they could ever enter your facility, stuff like that. It, it makes it really hard to go find somebody if you have an emergency like we do. So... That, that wasn't just for us. That's the whole league. We're going to be able to add a third two-way, and we're certainly jumping on that uh, pretty darn quick. Thank you, Tommy. You're welcome. Chase. Hey, Tommy. Um, in the contact tracing process, um, do you feel like you guys got to the root of it and was protocol broken by anyone? Like, how did this start? You know, those are all great 
questions. How did it start? Was protocol broken? You know, I think we, we're looking at things, Chase, that today may be true, tomorrow could be different. But to this point, none of our staff has tested positive. So we don't think it was interactions in our facility. We think we've done everything the right way at our facility. We, we have players that are out on the floor unmasked during the games. That's an obvious thing. Uh, they have exposure to each other. Sometimes on the bench, players will pull their mask down, talk to each other, things like that. We, it, it, the, the contact tracing is very necessary, but it's also difficult because it could have been anywhere, anytime. Right, but but the fact that it's it hasn't jumped the wall, to, it hasn't extended past players, kind of makes you, at least, uh, common sense wise, it would lead you to believe maybe it's happening because it's uh, contact out on the court or whatnot. Um, but there's not any one specific thing that you can point to and say it was this person that got it from this person. We know certain players guard each other longer than others during the game. Uh, second spectrum shows that, and that's something the NBA uses from contact tracing. But to, to try to say, hey, it was at this point or this person, that's what caused it. I don't think we'll ever be that evolved uh, in, in this circumstance to figure out what it, what it, where and when exactly. But as I said before, every place that we played, there was a player the next night that was pulled out. And we weren't one of those, you know, after we played them, we kept testing negative, kept testing negative, we kept moving. But the incubation period of this is, you know, seven to 10 days. So it could turn on you in a hurry. And that's kind of, it was, I hate to say it, but it was our turn, right? This is just something that it hit us all at once. Other teams are hitting them a couple at a time, but we're, we, we shouldn't feel special. Other teams have gone through this. Other teams will go through this. So we all have to, you know, like I keep telling our guys, is you don't want to be that person. Don't be on the wrong side of this. Continue to do all the right things. We believe we were doing the right things and just unfortunate, you know, this thing is extremely contagious. And uh, Scott, you've been really positive and supportive about how the league has, has put the protocols in place. Um, as you guys have tried to do this outside of a bubble, do, do you still have the same confidence that it could be done? Um, yeah, I mean, I, we still, we trust in the NBA and the medical, the science and everything behind it. Uh, they're gonna put us in the best position as, as possible, we know. We knew going into it, there's going to be uh, some bumps in the road. We just, we got to keep um, navigating. It's definitely going to be some, uh, it's been some difficult days for us, but we're going to have to continue to work together and, 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 and move on. Um, don't know what, you know, we're, it's day to day. We're, we're doing exactly what the NBA uh, tells us to do and, and then we're, we're moving day to day, just like what they tell us to do. And we're going forward. It's uh, something that we, we don't make those decisions. We just um, follow the rules. Howard. Sorry, hi guys, uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, Tommy, I wanted to ask, you made a, a reference to players' privacy and so not reveal who the six players are who tested positive, but would you be comfortable telling us anything about their conditions, whether they're symptomatic or asymptomatic or how serious it might be for any of those uh, players who have COVID-19? Yeah, I, I think it's so early right now, I would probably uh, characterize, uh, I have to think off the top of it, about four guys are completely asymptomatic and feeling fine. Uh, don't believe that they have it. The tests show otherwise. Two guys are, are definitely, uh, they're, they're feeling some, some symptoms, but uh, one person was feeling symptoms two days ago and has felt great the next two days. So I, I think we're all going to experience this roller coaster of every day. How do you feel today? And everybody seems to be the one consistent theme with this. If there's no consistent theme with this, there's everybody has a different experience with this virus. And we, we had that going back to when we, before we went to Orlando and we had players that had the virus and, and everybody comparing notes with each other, uh, mostly 
very, very mild symptoms, didn't have any issues. And those players all picked up the phone to the players that now are tested positive and they're sharing their experiences. You know, obviously it was documented Robin Lopez had it. Uh, Robin still to this day doesn't believe that he had it. It had no symptom to, to him. It was, there was nothing there. So he's, he's been very, very big reaching out to every one of these people uh, sharing his experience and making sure that they, they share theirs with him. And, uh, you know, it's like a little bit of, uh, as we like to say, it's a group therapy thing, but we're going to get everybody through it together. But thus far, I think we've been fortunate. Thank you. Dwayne. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate this. Uh, Tommy, I was just going to just ask in terms of having contact with the Suns, because obviously they're having their games postponed as well um, in, in, you know, in relation to this. So do you, do you guys go back and forth and, and discuss, you know, share notes? Hey, look, this is what we're seeing. What are you seeing? Or has a conversation even taken place between you two? No, we, we talk all the, all the GMs. We have a daily task force call. We all in constant communication in real time. And, and then when something hits our team, you know, um, I, I, I'm already pretty friendly with most of these guys, but we, we, you get even closer as you start to compare notes on, on something like what we're going through. Certainly the GMs from Boston, from Philly, from Miami, uh, from Phoenix, we've all been comparing what's going on with our teams as games are getting canceled. With Cleveland, you know, certainly they, they had similar experiences before they were, they were playing games with eight players. And, and then they were obviously on track to come here and now that game's canceled. So we're all discussing constantly what's going on with our teams and how the testing's going. And you, you get to, uh, you, you get a really good idea that, uh, like I said earlier, we should never feel special where everybody's going through this. We're not alone. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Matt. Hey, Tommy. Um, there is this report that some players have tested positive for a second time. Obviously, you can't get into specifics, but is, is that a concern with any of your guys that maybe they've caught this a second time? No, not 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 to this point. But I think those those uh, the fact that there is documentation of. of not just players, people in, in the world that have had it before and now are, are testing positive again, should give everybody pause. And no one should feel immune. If you, if you think that the good news is, hey, I had this virus, I can't get it again. I, I think this is a great lesson to be learned and we all can preach that, that there, you just cannot be cautious enough and making sure that you're doing everything possible to, to put yourself in the best possible uh, safety position. And, and in the NBA, I believe that was confirmed that, that there were people that had had it before have tested positive again. That's not the case with anybody here. Ben. Hey, Tommy. Um, with six players testing positive and with Russ and Thomas Bryant being hurt, more than half the roster is out in some capacity. So from a basketball perspective, how difficult has it been to do your job in evaluating the roster and, and the progression of the team? Uh, you know, it, I wouldn't say it's difficult. It's just that you, you really, I stay in the moment, Ben, and, and we're dealing with what's going on right now. I, I, I know these players, we put this roster together and, and it, things take time, certainly, but this almost, you almost hit pause. Like we got to deal with what's right in front of us right now. So it's hard to judge anybody to this point. Uh, if it's injury, if it's COVID, whatever's impacted our season, you know, certainly we haven't started out the way that we had planned, but that's what, this is what it is. And we keep moving forward, learning as I keep saying uh, from it. But I think this team has exhibited some amazing characters, some amazing grit, uh, some very, really tough early losses, but they bounced out of it. We're three and three in the new year. And, uh, you know, like I said, if there's any silver lining whatsoever, we had some players that are, you know, certainly losing Thomas Bryant was horrible. But we had some players that, that uh, I think stepped up. And I think there's some players, like in Russ's case, you know, you hate him missing games. But the fact that these games have been canceled, that, that's, you know, there's a little bit of a silver lining in there. That, that we know we're able to play in more games this year. You know, the season's just kind of so compact right now. If you, if you miss uh, three or four days, you might miss two or three games. 
and that, that's that's normal really in the NBA. But that's a lot of games if, if you're only playing a 72 game season. So, uh, but but I, I we pretty much know who we have, what we're dealing with here, and I'm, I'm really excited about the young players. I'm excited about the vets we added, and certainly, you know, I can't say enough about Bradley Beal and the season he's having right now, and where. We know he is uh, he continues to lead this franchise and he continues to raise his game. And uh, I can't say enough about his leadership. He's been fantastic. Winston. Hey, Tommy and Scott, thank you very much for doing this, guys. Um, I know this is an insane year and not the way that you guys expected things to go, but when earlier in uh, 2020, when the decision was made to play in the bubble, Everything was just fine, no positives, no, and what have you. But how, how do you long for those days of playing in the bubble, seeing as that you guys were almost in that cocoon and you didn't have this possibility of guys, you know, testing positive? You know what, um, Scotty, I'll, I'll let you answer first since uh, you're, you're dealing with it on the front front end of that. Yeah, um, I mean, it's definitely was considered, I'm, I'm assuming I wasn't obviously involved in any of the conversations with the the league and the players association. Um, it's something that I know going into it initially, it was, it was uh, not easy being away from family for, you know, a couple of months. Uh, but we did feel, you did feel, you know, pretty safe and and it was successful. I'm assuming that they did discuss it, but they came up with the, uh, you know, the strategy that do what we've done. And I still have confidence in it, um, but I know it's definitely tough, and it's hit us pretty hard uh, with um, the nine players and in, involved. And hopefully, that is um, ends up just being that. And hopefully, everybody is continues to move forward and be in a, the safest position as possible. But it's something that we we don't have control over. So I don't really think much about it. Uh, I just I'm in I believe in the league. I've been in it for a long time and I, they're going to put us in the safe safest position possible. You know, I, Winston, I would probably add to that. Nobody misses being in a bubble. I promise you that. It, it, respectfully, it was an amazing accomplishment. It was an adjustment that had to be made to finish last season. And, and it was a tremendous success, tremendous accomplishment by the NBA. But if you could have a situation where you didn't have to do that again, I think everybody wanted to explore that first, from the players to the staff to everybody, not just people that were in the bubble, but just anybody in the NBA. And to give fans a chance to see games you know, in the cities that they can. We're trying so hard to get back in front of our fans. We, our players miss our fans. You know, these guys spend hours picking out outfits to walk into the arena and, and to get a chance to interact with fans, do all this stuff. It's really, really difficult. And I think that's one area we got to really focus on is the mental health, the headspace of everybody involved with what we're doing right now, because it's so different than what we're used to doing. We're very grateful to have the opportunity to work. We understand there's so many people right now out of work. We're very grateful for that. But we got to look at the, the the adjustments and the things that the players are going through on a daily that really uh, we got to watch for this because it's, it's a very difficult thing that they're trying to do. I give Coach Brooks so much credit. He's kept this group together. Like I said, we had a couple of tough losses. We had a devastating injury with Thomas Bryant throughout it all. He gets everybody ready to play every day. We are definitely sticking together. And I, I look at the leadership of Bradley, of, of Russell Westbrook, uh, with, with Coach Brooks, and they've kept everybody going. And, and that's what we're about here. Thanks, guys. Please be safe. Thank you. You too. Neil. Hey, Tommy, Scott, uh, for either of you, um, hope everything you know turns out soon, uh, turns out better soon. For Russ, um, is his timeline still the same that, you know, initially he was going to get reevaluated at the end of this week? You guys are just pushing that off a few days, given all the circumstances and craziness and not anything more than that. And also, uh, how concerned are you, given that it's started in training camp and unfortunately not uh, gone away yet? Well, I think, I think initially when we came out, we said about a week. 
or evaluating a week. I think that was either Sunday or Monday. So we're not quite there a week, but early in the week, whether it's, you know, with the, with the cancellation of games over the weekend and Martin Luther King Day Monday, don't know if we're going to be able to put like a, okay, it's going to be this day. Hopefully we can get into the building and we can start uh, some doing some, you know, one on zero or some even practices with limited number of guys. Um, like I've said, you know, last week with, with Russell, he's as tough as they come. He's as competitive and he wants to keep being on the court with their players. It happened in training camp. He, he got hit pretty bad and he, he set some practices out and did very little and others. Uh, then he was feeling a little bit better and then it got hit again in one of the games early on and then um, powered through it and, and, and kept fighting and kept being uh, competing with his team teammates. And then it, I think it happened again. I think it, I want to, I keep going back to the Philadelphia game um, early, but it's um, he feels much better. Spoke to him the other day, text him today. He feels much better. Um, but only thing that we can do, it's, it's day to day. You know, we're, we're, like I said, early next week, whether it's Monday or Tuesday, we'll evaluate him again and, and see when he can get back on the court. I don't, uh, but none of us have been on the court. No, no one's been practicing. Nobody's been doing anything. So it'd just be nice to, for us to get together. Hopefully we could do that soon. And real quick, if, is there any concern that any additional players might test positive and or might have to enter the protocol? Or do you think you guys have that's it for now, hopefully? Well, I think that's that's a realistic concern every day for every team. You, there's no way of telling what tomorrow will hold. We know we haven't played a game since we played Phoenix. You know, the way that our minds kind of work right now, unfortunately, is, is like we know Miami, the window for Miami, when we played them seven days, that, that happens tomorrow, I believe. So we, we kind of know if nothing crazy has happened since then that, that, that we should be safe out of that window. Then it's the next opponent to make it sure as you go through that checklist. And that's even primitive to, to think in, that, in those terms, but that's kind of what we've been guided on to know when exposure time you should be out of which window versus which team, if that makes sense. But, you know, certainly tomorrow could be something totally different. Um, again, we're, we're, we're starting to get quite a few players on our team that have had it. So there's very few guys left that don't have it. So I guess that's one way of looking at it. But as we know, you can, you can get it again. So that doesn't really give us much comfort. But I think we're no different than any other team you're only as good as that phone call in the uh, in the morning when you get the results. And we'll finish up with Chris Miller. Appreciate it, Scott. Um, Tommy, I got two questions really quick. Obviously, you're dealing with COVID, but there's also the inauguration next week. Have you or anyone within the organization talked to city or federal officials about what the protocol is for you guys either practicing at ESA or how to kind of navigate around the city? Well, fortunately, Chris, uh, we've had a fantastic relationship with, with, with the District of Columbia and the mayor's office, and they're in constant contact. Um, we, we're out of town during that, the inauguration period around that, so that's not going to affect our practice or where we are at. But certainly our, 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 our hope is that it's a very peaceful day. Uh, our country needs that badly. And the final question is about the appointment of Amber becoming the new Capital City GoGo -Go general manager. Best Couldn't news be. we heard all day. Exactly. You talk about time time for some good news. Couldn't be prouder. Uh, Amber deserves it. She originally came to the Wizards as an intern, worked her way up. She worked with the NBA. She worked with the union. Uh, she worked with the GoGo -Go in their first two years. It's a natural progression that where she went, came in as director of player programs assistant GM and now we she's the GM um, and we're excited she's leading our team our five players that will send along with Erie uh, to Orlando to the bubble down there we're excited about her leadership and her future and also I, I, I text with her today and I, I have it on text and I'm going to save it when she becomes a general manager I'm her number one hire as a consultant <laughs> And I just want to thank Coach Brooks again for jumping on here, his insight and everything. He's been, he's been instrumental in this call. You guys keep asking him questions, please.